In this video, we are going to learn various brain parts and their functions. The brain is a complex organ composed of various parts that work together to control different functions of the body. Here are some of the major parts of the brain along with their approximate locations and functions. Cerebrum the cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and is divided into two hemispheres, the left and right cerebral hemispheres. It is responsible for higher level cognitive functions such as thinking, memory, perception and voluntary movement. Then frontal lobe. Located in the front of the brain, the frontal lobe is involved in decision making, problem solving, planning, reasoning and controlling voluntary movements. Then parietal lobe. Situated behind the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe possesses Processes sensory information such as touch, temperature, pain, and spatial awareness. Then temporal lobe found on the sides of brain. The temporal lobe is involved in processing auditory information, memory information, and language comprehension. So first part, or which we will be discussing, is cerebrum, largest part of the brain, and is divided into two hemispheres: the left and the right cerebral hemispheres. It is responsible for higher level cognitive functions like thinking, memory, perception and voluntary movements. These are associated with cerebrum. Then frontal lobe is there located in the front of the brain. The frontal lobe is involved in decision making, problem solving, planning, reasoning and controlling voluntary movements. Then parietal lobe is there situated behind the frontal lobe. The parietal lobe processes Processes sensory information such as touch, temperature, pain, and spatial awareness. Then, temporal lobe found on the sides of brain. The temporal lobe is involved in processing auditory information, memory formation, and language comprehension. Then, occipital lobe located at the back of the brain. The occipital lobe is primarily responsible for processing visual information from the eyes. Then cerebellum, positioned at the base of the brain. The cerebellum is involved in coordinating voluntary movements, balance, posture and fine motor skills. Then brainstem. The brainstem is located at the base of the brain and connects the brain to the spinal cord. It plays a crucial role in regulating basic functions necessary for survival including breathing, heart rate and consciousness. Then thalamus is there. Situated deep within the brain, the thalamus acts as a relay station receiving sensory information from various parts of the body and relaying it to the approximate areas of the cerebral cortex. Then hypothalamus region found below the thalamus. The hypothalamus regulates homeostasis by controlling functions such as body temperature, hunger, thirst, water, sleep and hormone reduction. Then hippocampus located within the temporal lobe. The hippocampus is involved in the formation and retrieval of long-term memories. And next some other portions like amygdala. The amygdala located deep within the temporal lobe plays a key role in processing emotions particularly fear and aggression. It is involved in the formation of mem emotional memories and the regulation of emotional responses. Then basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is a group of structures located deep within the brain. It is involved in motor control, coordination and initiation and execution of voluntary movements. It also plays a role in reward-based learning and habit formation. Then corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is a broad band of nerve fibers that connects the two cerebral hemispheres of the brain. It enables communication and information transfer between the left and right hemispheres, allowing them to work together. Then medulla oblongata. Situated at the base of the brain stem, the medulla oblongata is responsible for vital functions such as controlling blood pressure, heart rate, breathing, swallowing and reflex actions like coughing and sneezing. Then reticular formation. The reticular formation is a network of neurons located in the brain stem. It plays a crucial role in regulating arousal attention and sleep wake cycles. It helps filter sensory information and determines what information reaches the cerebral cortex. Then pituitary gland. Although not technically part of the brain, the pituitary gland is often referred to as the master gland because it produces and releases hormones that regulate various bodily functions. It is located at the base of the brain, just below the hypothalamus. Then prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the frontmost part of the frontal lobe. It is involved in higher order cognitive functions such as decision making, impulsive control, personality expression, social behavior, 
and executive functions like planning and organizing this are associated with prefrontal cortex then somatosensory cortex located in the parietal lobe the somatosensory cortex receives and processes sensory information from different parts of the body including touch pressure temperature and pain it helps in creating the perception of bodily sensations then broca's area will be there broca's area is typically found in the left hemisphere of the frontal lobe specifically in the posterior frontal gyrus it is involved in language production and speech articulation damage to this area which area broca's area is associated with difficulties in speech articulation so damage to this area can result in expressive language difficulties then vernix area vernix area is usually located in the left hemisphere of the temporal lobe near the auditory cortex it plays a crucial role in language comprehension broca's area and vernix area are very important and are related to language comprehension and language articulation such related things speech articulation then damage to vernix area lead to difficulties in understanding spoken or written language visual cortex the visual cortex is located in the occipital lobe at the back of the brain it is responsible for processing visual information received from the eyes and plays a vital role in visual perception object recognition and interpreting visual stimuli then limbic system the limbic system is the collection of brain structures including the hippocampus amygdala and parts of the hypothalamus it is involved in regulating emotions memory formation motivation and the sense of reward it plays a crucial role in formation and expression of emotions then olfactory bulb the olfactory bulb is located in the front of the brain and is involved in processing the sense of smell it receives signals from olfactory sensory neurons in the nose and helps in identifying and interpreting different smells then hippocampus although mentioned earlier it's worth nothing the hippocampus again it's worth noting the hippocampus again it's crucial for memory function and formation and consolidation particularly in the formation of long term declarative memories or explicit memories about facts and events then spinal cord while not part of brain the spinal cord is an essential part of central nervous system it is a long thin tubular bundle of nerves that extends from the brain stem to the lower back the spinal cord serves as a pathway for transmitting sensory and motor signals between the brain and the rest of the body then some other parts like ventricles the brain contains a system of interconnected fluid filled cavities called ventricles these ventricles produce and circulate cerebrospinal fluid which provides cushioning and nourishment for the brain and spinal cord then suprachiasmatic nucleus or scn this scn is a small group of cells located in the hypothalamus it serves as a body's internal clock regulating circadian rhythms and controlling the sleep wake cycle pineal gland the pineal gland is a small endocrine gland located deep within the brain it produces hormone melatonin which plays a crucial role in regulating sleep patterns and the body's response to light and dark cycles superior colliculus found in the midbrain the superior colliculus is involved in visual processing and plays a significant role in coordinating eye movement and directing attention toward visual stimuli then inferior colliculus situated in the midbrain the inferior colliculus is primarily responsible for processing auditory information it receives inputs from the ears and helps in localizing sounds and integrating auditory signals then reticular activating system or ras the reticular activating system is a network of neurons scattered throughout the brain stem it is responsible for regulating wakefulness alertness and the overall level of arousal then association areas association areas are regions of the cerebral cortex that integrate and process information from multiple sensory areas they are involved in higher order cognitive functions such as language comprehension abstract thinking and problem solving then motor cortex is also there the motor cortex is located in the frontal lobe 
just in front of the cerebral sulcus it controls voluntary movements by sending signals to the muscles of the body the motor cortex is organized in a way that specific areas correspond to specific body parts then sensory homunculus the sensory homunculus is a dis- distorted representation of the human body within the somatosensory cortex. It illustrates the relative amount of sensory processing devoted to different body parts and areas like the hands and face occupying larger portions compared to less sensitive areas. Then arcuate fasciculus. Which areas like hands and face occupying larger portions? Then Arcuate fasciculus. The arcuate fasciculus is a bundle of nerve fibers connecting Broca's area and Wernicke's area in the brain. It plays a crucial role in the integration of language comprehension and production. These additional parts are very important. Then anterior cingulate cortex. The anterior cingulate cortex is located in the frontal loop above the corpus callosum. It is involved in various cognitive processes including decision making, error detection, emotion regulation and conflict monitoring. Then fusiform face area or FAA, FFA. The fusiform face area is a region located in the temporal lobe, specifically in the fusiform gyrus. It is specialized for facial recognition and comprehension of facial features, contributing to our ability to recognize and differentiate faces. Then primary auditory cortex. The primary auditory cortex is located in the temporal lobe and is responsible for processing and analyzing auditory information perceived from the received from the ears. It helps in the perception of sound including pitch, frequency and location. Then basilar membrane. The basilar membrane is a structure located within the cochlea of the inner ear. It is essential for the process of hearing as it vibrates in response to sound waves triggering the stimulation of auditory sensory cells. Then ventral tegmental area. Ventral tegmental area. The ventral tegmental area is a region in the midbrain that plays a crucial role in the brain's reward system. It is involved in the release of dopamine, a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure, motivation and addition. The nucleus accumbens. The nucleus accumbens is a structure located in the basal ganglia. It is a key part of the brain's reward circuitry and is involved in motivation, pleasure, reinforcement and the experience of reward. The posterior parietal cortex. The posterior parietal cortex is located in the parietal lobe and is involved in processing sensory information related to spatial awareness, attention and integration of visual and somatosensory inputs. Superior temporal gyrus. The superior temporal gyrus is situated in the temporal lobe and is involved in several functions including auditory processing, language comprehension and higher level visual processing. Then supramarginal gyrus. Found in the parietal lobe, the supramarginal gyrus plays a role in various cognitive functions including language processing, phenological awareness and spatial cognition. Primary motor cortex. The primary motor cortex located in the frontal lobe is responsible for generating and controlling voluntary movements. Different areas of the primary motor cortex correspond to specific body parts allowing for precise motor control. Then these and some other points like dorsolateral prefrontal prefrontal cortex. Dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is located in the frontal loop and is involved in executive functions such as working, memory, cognitive flexibility, planning and decision making. Primary visual cortex. Primary visual cortex also known as V1 of the striate cortex is located in the occipital lobe. It is responsible for the initial processing and interpretation of visual information received from the eyes. Then Hestil's gyrus. Hestil's gyrus is located in the temporal lobe and is involved in the initial processing and analysis of auditory information, particularly in the perception of pitch and complex auditory stimuli. Ventral visual stream. The ventral visual stream is a pathway in the brain that extends from the primary visual cortex to the temporal lobe. It is involved in object recognition, face recognition and the perception of visual details. Then dorsal visual stream. The dorsal visual stream is a pathway in the brain that extends from the primary visual cortex to the parietal lobe.
it is involved in the perception of spatial relationships motion processing and the guidance of visual attention then para hippocampal gyrus the para hippocampal gyrus is located in the medial temporal lobe adjacent to the hippocampus it is involved in memory encoding spatial navigation and the processing of contextual information primary somatosensory cortex located in the parietal lobe and is responsible for processing and interpreting sensory information related to touch pressure temperature and pain received from different parts of the body then cingulate cortex the cingulate cortex is a part of the limbic system and is involved in various functions including emotion regulation attention cognitive control and the experience of pain then superior front superior frontal gyrus the superior frontal gyrus is located in the frontal lobe and is involved in executive functions attention control then working memory and decision making insular cortex the insular cortex also known as the insula is a region located deep within the brain beneath the frontal parietal and temporal lobes it plays a role in diverse functions including emotion processing self awareness introspection like awareness of internal body states and social cognition then precentral gyrus also known as the primary motor cortex is located in the frontal lobe it is responsible for initiating and controlling voluntary movements of body then postcentral gyrus somatosensory cortex is located in the parietal lobe it receives and processes sensory information from different parts of the body including touch pain temperature and pro- proprioception then substantia nigra the substantia nigra is a structure located in the midbrain it is involved in the production and regulation of dopamine a neurotransmitter that plays a critical role in movement reward and motivation dysfunction of the substantia nigra is associated with parkinson's disease then olfactory cortex is a collection of brain regions located in the frontal and temporal lobes it processes and interprets olfactory information received from the olfactory bulbs allowing us to perceive and distinguish different smells then superior colliculus which we have learned earlier then inferior colliculus which we all also learned then paracentral lobule the paracentral lobule is situated in the median portion of the frontal and parietal lobe it is involved in the control of lower limb movements and plays a role in motor coordination and control of lower extremities then perirrhinal cortex the perirrhinal cortex is located in the medial temporal lobe and is involved in various aspects of memory and object recognition it plays a role in formation and retrieval of long term memories and the integration of sensory information related to objects then nucleus basalis of meinert meinert the nucleus basalis of Mainert is located in the basal forebrain and is involved in the production and release of acetylcholine a neurotransmitter important for attention learning and memory dysfunction of this nucleus is associated with alzheimer's disease pons pons is a structure located in the brain stem between the midbrain and medulla oblongata it serves as a relay center connecting different parts of brain and coordinating various functions including sleep breathing and facial movements these additional brain regions contribute to various functions like motor control sensory processing olfactory and visual attention memory and coordination etc parietal association cortex the parietal association cortex is a region of the parietal lobe that integrates sensory information from different modalities and helps in spatial perception attention numerical cognition and the manipulation of objects in the visual field then frontal association cortex the frontal association cortex is a region of the frontal lobe involved in higher cognitive functions such as executive functions decision making problem solving social behavior and personality expression then default mode network the default mode network is a network of brain regions that are active when an individual is at rest and not engaged in specific tasks it is involved in self reflection introspection daydreaming and memory consolidation 
question amygdaloid nuclei the amygdaloid nuclei are located within the temporal lobe near the hippocampus and the lateral ventricles they are involved in the processing and regulation of emotions particularly fear and the formation of emotional memories then habenula the habenula is a small structure located in the diencephalon specifically in the posterior part of epithalamus it is involved in regulating the release of neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin and plays a role in reward processing stress response and sleep wake cycles then olfactory bulb which we have learned the nucleus accumbens and subthalamic subthalamic nucleus the subthalamic nucleus is located within the diencephalon beneath the thalamus it is involved in the regulation of motor functions particularly in the control of movement and coordination red nucleus the red nucleus is a small structure located in the midbrain specifically in the tegment it is involved in motor control particularly in the coordination of movements and the regulation of muscle tone then cerebral peduncles the cerebral peduncles are located in the midbrain on the ventral side they consist of white matter tracts that connect the cerebral cortex to the brain stem and spinal cord allowing for the transmission of motor and sensory information then fornix the fornix is a bundle of nerve fibers that are located in the limbic system limbic system connecting the hippocampus to other brain regions it plays roles in memory formation and retrieval particularly in the transfer of information from hippocampus and other brain areas then median geniculate nucleus the median geniculate nucleus is located within the thalamus it receives auditory information from the inferior colliculus and relays it to the auditory cortex contributing to the processing and perception of sound then lateral geniculate nucleus the lateral geniculate nucleus is also located within the thalamus it receives visual information from the retina and relays it to the visual cortex playing a crucial role in visual perception and processing superior colliculus inferior colliculus pineal gland substantia innominata the substantia innominata is a collection of cell groups located in the basal forebrain beneath the globus pallidus it is involved in various functions including attention memory and arousal the nucleus basalis of minorite the nucleus basalis of minorite is a group of neurons located in the basal forebrain it produces and releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine which plays a role in attention learning and memory dysfunction of this nucleus is associated with alzheimer's disease paraventricular nucleus the paraventricular nucleus is located within the epithalamus supraquiasmatic nucleus zona inserta the zona inserta is a region located in the subthalamus beneath the thalamus it plays roles in modulation of motor functions sensory processing and regulation of arousal then periaqueductal gray the periaqueductal gray is a region surrounding the cerebral aqueduct in the midbrain it is involved in the modulation of pain signals regulation of defensive mechanisms behaviors and control of autoimmune functions supra optic nucleus then para branchial nucleus rafe nuclei the rafe nuclei are a collection of nuclei located along the midline of brain stem from the pons to the medulla then pontine nuclei and located in the pons forming a bridge between the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum they relay information between the structures and play a role in motor coordination particularly in planning and execution of movements then interthalamic cadetion the interthalamic cadetion also known as the massa intermedia is a small bridge of gray matter that connects the thalamic nuclei of the left and right hemispheres its function is not fully understood but it may play a role in coordinating and integrating information between the thalamic nuclei locus coeruleus the locus coeruleus is a small nucleus located in the pons near the floor of the fourth ventricle then nucleolus solitarius 
along with that substantia gelatinosa then suprachiasmatic nuclei then interstitial nucleus of kajal the interstitial nucleus of kajal is located within the midbrain near the oculomotor nucleus it is involved in the control of eye movement particularly in the coordination of vertical gaze supramammillary nucleus nucleus of solitary tract medial septal nucleus accessory olfactory bulb pontine reticular formation the nucleus prepositus hypoglossy then paracentral nucleus edinger westphal nucleus supra optic reticular nucleus para hippocampal gyrus and topics like nucleus accumbens shell and core along with that supra optic nucleus reticular activating system ventral tegmental area then anterior cingulate cortex dorsolateral prefrontal cortex posterior parietal cortex then superior temporal gyrus along with inferior temporal gyrus medial temporal lobe and some other portions like entorhinal cortex subcalosal gyrus superior frontal gyrus median orthofrontal cortex and insula cortex along with the anterior cingulate cortex fusiform face area superior temporal sulcus ventral striatum and some other points like dorsal striatum perirhinal cortex then inferior parietal lobule then lateral geniculate nucleus then para hippocampal cortex and primary somatosensory cortex primary motor cortex substantia nigra medial prefrontal cortex then some other points or portions like that then what is human brain made up of the human brain is made up of several components each with its own unique structure and function like neurons neurons are the fundamental building blocks of brain and are responsible for transmitting electrical signals they consist of a cell body then writes or receivers of signals and an axon transmitter of signals then glial cells glial cells glia cells also known as neuroglia are non neuronal cells that provide support and protection to neurons they play a critical role in maintaining the structural integrity of the brain regulating chemical environment and supporting neuronal function cerebrum the cerebrum is the largest and most prominent part of human brain cerebellum brain stem limbic system spinal cord etc along with that gray matter white matter what is gray matter gray matter refer to the regions of the brain that primarily consist of neuronal cell bodies dendrites and synapses it is responsible for processing information and carrying out various cognitive functions the outer layer of cerebral cerebrum called the cerebral cortex is predominantly composed of gray matter then white matter white matter refers to the regions of brain that mainly consist of myelinated axons which form connections between different areas of gray matter it facilitates the transmission of electrical signals and enables communication between various brain regions then corpus callosum ventricles meninges the meninges are protective membranes that surround and enclose the brain and spinal cord there are three layers of meninges the dura mater the arachnoid mater and the pia mater dura outermost arachnoid middle layer and the pia mater innermost layer blood vessels will be there vascularized structure and receives rich blood supply blood vessels including arteries and veins then basal ganglia 
hippocampus region, amygdala, hypothalamus, thalamus and some other points like that. So the evolution of brain from early organisms to humans is a complex and fascinating process. So early brain structures and simple organisms like single celled organisms, primitive organisms such as bacteria have no distinct brain structures. They rely on simple cellular processes to carry out basic functions. Nidarians such as jellyfish possess a decentralized nerve in it that allows for basic sensory perception and response to stimuli. Nerve system complexity in invertebrates, flat worms and like planaria have a central nerve system consisting of a simple brain and nerve coats. They exhibit basic sensory and motor capabilities. Then arthropods include insects possess more complex brains with specialized structures called ganglia. The brains allow for advanced sensory processing, learning and more sophisticated behaviors. Development of vertebrate brains. Fish have relatively simple brains with distinct regions, including the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. These regions control basic sensory processing, motor coordination, and instinctual behaviors. Then amphibians and reptiles. Amphibians and reptiles exhibit more complex brains with an enlarged forebrain. This expansion supports improved sensory processing, motor control, and some degree of learning and memory. Birds have well developed brains. Then early mammals displayed increased brain complexity, particularly in the neocortex, outer layer of cerebrum responsible for higher cognitive functions. Then primates, including monkeys and apes, have further developed brains with an emphasis on visual processing and increased cognitive abilities. Then humans and that's it. Thank you for listening.